If you want to know the best 2v2 comps for Wrath Classic, then you've come to the right place. Today, we will be telling you everything you need to know about the 2s meta in Wrath Classic Season 5. And don't worry, every spec will be represented. Well, <coughs> uh, mostly everything. First though, you are probably wondering how we make our tier lists. Well, just like any video we make, we start by finding the best PvPers, using our vast network of rank 1 and professional players. We will then spend multiple hours in a Discord call with them, getting as much information as we can for each topic. For this video, we consulted with a handful of incredibly knowledgeable Wrath players, and made a giant list of the best comps for every spec. Then, using their decades of combined expertise, we organized the list together to bring it to you. The players we consult with have multiple rank 1 titles, tournament experience, and huge followings on Twitch, all working together to bring you the highest quality instructional content WoW PvP has to offer. And using these same players, we have already developed hundreds of guides over at skillcap.com. Yes, right now you can learn the same damage rotations, defensive techniques, and secret min-maxing tips all in our amazing class courses. Our videos are designed to get you ahead of the competition as quickly as possible. And with a money back guarantee, we are confident in your ability to see huge rating gains this season. So what are you waiting for? Visit the link below for an exclusive discount to get started. Anyway, let's kick things off with the S tier, going over the three comps that rule the meta in Season 5. First up, we have what is arguably the best 2v2 comp of the entire game, Holy Paladin Warrior. Yes, who would have thought the best melee and the best healer would make for a good comp? But you might be asking, why is it so strong? Well, for one, Paladins and Warriors are one of the few classes with multiple defensive CDs. You might be familiar with the cooldown trading meta in more modern expansions, but this isn't really a thing for most comps in Wrath Classic, where consistent damage is more prevalent. Well, it just so happens that Warriors have the best consistent pressure too. This of course requires them to have lots of uptime, which is no problem with freedom and a spammable magic dispel that provides some increased resistance with Sacred Cleansing. Ask any rank 1 player what they think the best 2v2 comp is, and the majority of them will tell you it's Pally Warriors. Instead of relying on gimmicks, this comp is simply a brick wall and is a massive execution test for any player looking to climb the ladder. Moving on, we have another meta giant, Disc Priest Rogue. This comp represents the other end of the healer DPS spectrum in 2v2, sacrificing consistent pressure for more bursty damage waves. Just like on retail, the Wrath version has its win condition built around Shadow Dance, locking down the kill target, CCing an off target, hoping to force one or more cooldowns before retreating to do it again. Disc Priests in particular are the most offensively capable healer, with a solid damage toolkit combined with the best dispel in the game, which together give them huge kill potential with the burst of a subtlety rogue. Finally, we have our last S tier comp for Season 5, Holy Paladin DK. Now, let's make one thing clear. This is just for Season 5. As the expansion progresses, this comp will have a small fall from grace especially when better PvE trinkets like Solace and Bauble come to define later seasons. One of the advantages of this comp in Season 5 is that it can simply outlast the mana bar of enemy healers, which becomes less of a problem once Solace comes into the mix. As far as Bauble is concerned, this trinket is a soft counter to Strangulate, since it can be used while silenced to effectively trade one to one. Now, not all is doom and gloom though, as this comp is still strong in the early expansion while damage is at its highest. The combination of Hammer of Justice into Strangulate is really scary for any team, and Unholy DKs and Holy Paladins both do exceptionally well into double DPS setups thanks to their abundance of defensive cooldowns. And with that, we have our three comps that will define the meta during Season 5. These combos have really consistent win rates across the board, and although they have a few counters, they are far and few between. Now though, it's time to look at the A tier, where we will be breaking things down by class. And before we start, being on the A tier still means the comp is really good. Even though these might not be the best of the best setups, they are still super competitive, even at the highest end of the ladder. Starting off, we had two more Death Knight comps, one for Unholy and one for Frost, of all things. First up, Unholy has the option of playing with a one-handed Ret Paladin. This comp has all the similar benefits of the Holy version, just with more damage. One-handed Ret Paladins still have all the same things that make their team so tanky, including Sacred Shield and Divine Sacrifice, while also being equipped with instant cast off heals and dispel protection thanks to Seal of Vengeance stacking. Frost is a bit of an odd spec and plays a bit more setup based in Wrath Classic. That is due to Hungering Cold, which can be used to set up kills alongside Hammer of Justice. While Frost DK isn't nearly as versatile as its unholy counterpart, it still has a place in the meta in the early stages of the expansion. 
Next up, we have two Feral Druid comps, with Feral Disc Priest potentially pushing the boundary into S-tier territory. This comp is a contender to the top three setups we mentioned earlier, but with one caveat, the fact that it is significantly less forgiving. In the hands of two amazing players, the comp is easily top four, but anything less than perfection drops it down an entire tier. Feral Druid damage is incredibly high, and when combined with the offensive pressure of a Disc Priest, it's nearly unhealable, even without an MS effect. That being said, Ferals are super squishy and need to adopt a rigid hit-and-run playstyle in order to square up with other enemy melee. This comp has a good matchup spread into DKs and Warriors, but will hard struggle into Rogues, who are at peak strength in Season 5. Next up, we have all three Hunter specs with some deadly setups of their own. Both Marks and Survival can do well playing with a Disciplined Priest. These Hunter specs can do some good pressure on their own, but just need the extra push of a Priest or a Ret Paladin to truly elevate their offensive toolkit. Survival Hunters will be at their strongest in Season 5 simply due to damage output being the highest during this time, especially considering the overwhelming majority of their damage comes from magic, which isn't reduced by plate armor, giving them good matchups into high armor targets. VM Hunters, on the other hand, do almost pure physical damage, but when combined with an Enhancement Shaman in 2v2, are a brutal execution test in earlier seasons since their damage is so disproportionately high. This comp can expect to have super fast games that are either won or lost in a single interaction. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have mages, who require a bit more finesse than BM Hunters. Frost is by far the most popular mage spec, and generally does best with either a priest or sub rogue. These comps essentially do the same type of thing, which is to do quick bursts of damage combined with control, and then playing evasive before waiting for cooldowns and DRs to reset. The main difficulty of these double DPS setups, as we mentioned, is simply the fact that Holy Paladins and Unholy DKs are quite popular, and their abundance of defensive cooldowns makes it really difficult to consistently capitalize off of setups. Next up, we have two Paladin comps, the first being Ret Disc, which is optimally played with the more standard two-handed build. The general problem with Ret in 2v2 is that they lack both an interrupt and a healing reduction effect, which means they need a lot of offensive support from their partners, which Disc Priests are able to provide. Ret Disc is a comp that lends itself to much longer games, and generally looks to capitalize on defensive mistakes, doing huge damage pushes for small brief moments. One huge advantage of this comp is that both players have a defensive magic to spell, meaning they are great at punishing enemy teams who don't cross CC properly. Prot, Paladin, Resto, Shaman, on the other hand? Well, yeah, this comp is good, but if you value your sanity and reputation, you might want to steer clear of its dampening fiesta. Oh yeah, there is no dampening in Wrath, by the way, so this comp can have infinitely long games, especially since Divine Plea cannot be dispelled as Prot. Next up, we have two variants of the traditional Disc Priest Rogue, with Rogue SP and Assassination Disc. One niche interaction between Shadow Priests and Rogues is that Cheap Shot, Kidney Shot, and Psychic Horror are on completely different DRs, allowing this comp to do insanely powerful setups on a single target. This means any target without a trinket is vulnerable to up to 13 seconds of lockdown, which is an insanely long time given damage values in Season 5. Assassination, on the other hand, is a bit off meta, but still highly competitive in Wrath Classic. One of the biggest advantages of playing Asa is something many people don't even know about, and it's the fact that assassination rogues take 20% more healing thanks to a passive talent, and thanks to Deadly Brew, they are able to effectively apply three different poisons, adding some dispel protection to their healing reduction effect. In any case, these slightly off-brand priest rogue comps are bound to be quite popular in Season 5, and for good reason. Next up, we have some Elemental and Enhancement Shaman comps worth mentioning. First up, Elemental Shaman. Ellie is in a bit of an awkward place in 2v2 since they don't really offer the same consistent pressure as something like a DK or Warrior, despite all three classes being high tier. Playing with a Holy Paladin is one option, but we should note that this comp is notoriously slow and boring. Just like Pally Warrior, this comp is a brick wall, and it's no surprise that the combination of these three classes will come to form one of the best 3v3 comps of the expansion, Thunder Cleave. Enhance can do well in 2v2 with a BM Hunter like we previously mentioned, but also with a one-handed Ret Paladin, since they are relatively durable themselves while providing some extra utility at a small damage loss. One unique interaction is with Judgment of Light, which restores HP on every melee swing. Since Shamans attack relatively fast by default and even faster with Lust, this gives both players some added passive bulkiness. Moving on, we have some Warlock comps for both specs. Affliction is one spec in particular that will get better and better as the expansion progresses, as haste values increase and the damage of some key spells, specifically Corruption, scale better with gear. In Season 5, we still expect Affliction Warlock to be competitive with Resto Druids or Holy Paladins, as both of these healers offer huge healing support for the class as a whole. 
Destro can also play with the same healers, but generally needs to play significantly more setup based, either locking down kill targets with a stun or getting offensive support with cross CC in the form of Hex or Cyclone. One huge benefit of playing Destro is just how bulky it is into other casters thanks to nether protection. This gives it a slight edge in the Warlock mirror against Affliction since they will be taking 30% reduced damage nearly all game. And speaking of warriors, in case you don't want to play a god tier comp, you still have the timeless option of playing with a resto druid. This comp is a bit weaker compared to its TBC version, and the lack of a magic dispel can make it super punishing into a select few comps. Outside of that though, this setup is still designed to simply out pressure and outlast its opponents, and is one of the few 2v2 comps viable for resto druid on a competitive level. And here we have a complete picture of the A tier for the 2v2 bracket in Season 5. Once again, all the setups you see here are still incredibly strong and will have decent matchup spreads across the board. One thing that should stand out is the sheer volume and diversity of A tier comps for 2v2. That's right, virtually every spec can be competitive in Wrath Classic. Well, so long as you have the game knowledge required to actually make the most out of your character. And with Skillcap's wide array of class courses, you can easily learn everything you need to know to start playing just like a pro. If that wasn't enough, we have hundreds of 2v2 arena videos featuring commentaries from Rank 1 Wrath of the Lich King players, where you can learn strategies and advanced tips directly from the source. With a rating game guarantee, it's no wonder the players just like you are signing up today, so don't wait. Get ahead of the competition right now by visiting Skillcap.com. Anyway, let's wrap things up by looking at some mid and low tier comps. Every setup we are about to mention is still good or at least decent in 2v2 and includes a lot of off meta specs. These are still competitive even at a high level but might have some glaring weaknesses that hold them back. There is no way we'll be able to showcase every comp since there are hundreds of combinations, but these low to mid tiers should give you a better idea of what separates the good, the bad, and the ugly. First up we have some more off-brand mage comps featuring both arcane and fire. Arcane is in a really unique spot in Wrath Classic. By all definitions, it is a glass cannon, able to do insanely high casted damage, but with very limited defensive options compared to frost. And although it has insane kill potential, arcane is mostly limited by its mana, which will be a huge issue until later seasons when Solace comes into play. Unsurprisingly, this means it does best with either a Rogue or a Disc Priest who are able to complement its super bursty damage profile while also assisting with control. Last up, we have the final spec we want to showcase, Balanced Druid. If you've been watching our videos, you probably know that Starfall is the main win condition for Boomkins. With a Glyph, its cooldown gets reduced to one minute, making it line up perfectly with Shadow Dance, which is a huge part of its synergy with Sub Rogues. Generally speaking though, Boomkins need the ability to get off their damage and stall the fight long enough to get a second Starfall off, so playing with another hybrid is another option to do so. And here we have both the mid and low tier comps for Season 5. Again, every comp on the B tier is competitive just less consistent than anything we mentioned earlier. Many of these setups are relatively gimmicky, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just means games will be a bit more chaotic, if that's what you're into. Anyway guys, we want to hear from you. What comps do you plan on playing in Wrath Classic Season 5? Will you be playing the meta or will you go against the grain? Let us know in the comments below. While you're at it, consider checking out skillcap.com where you can find hundreds of class courses and gain over 400 rating this season while actively using our website or your money back. Visit the link below to get started. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.